Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void! Today, for your Sunday, it's going to be Rogue vs. Trap here on 2000 Atmospheres from DreamHack Last Chance. Top right, we got ourselves Rogue, and in the bottom left, we have Trap. Alright, so should be an excellent CVP for you today. Rogue is one of the top Zerg players in the world, and Trap is one of the top players who play Protoss in the world. If you missed my Rogue vs. Stats cast that I uh, put up last week, let me know. I'll put a link to it in the description for you, or just respond to you with the link. It was an incredible game on Death Aura, because Stats is in military, and hey, <laughs> Rogue didn't get his hatch blocked here on 2000 Atmospheres. Hmm. Alright, so playing the mineral game here a little bit, as always. Do, 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 do. Anyway, hope you're all having a fantastic day, no matter where you are. Things are good here in the Falcon Paladin household. The kids are getting their homework done. You know, we're doing fun stuff, like going to the trampoline park. It's been a little bit warm. Well, last week, it was a little bit warmer. Took them out to the park and able to play on the swings and the jungle gyms and stuff and really enjoy it. And then uh, started to storm and get colder a little bit later on during the week. So February can be fickle. I'll tell you that. Anywho. <laughs> One gate expand for trap and a cyber core is going to come down. Hey, hey, walling off with the cyber core. Mm. And. Simulator. Pylon. And then a stargate. Very, very standard opening here from trap. But it's safe and economical. So can't really blame him against Rogue, right? Rogue is terrifying in ZVP, man. He's a world champion. Really, really good with every single unit Zerg has to combat the Protoss fleet and ground forces. So we'll see. We will see what Trap does to throw him off his game. Or at least try to throw him off his game. Let's see, anywhere from now to three minutes is third base timing for Zerg these days. And there you go. Oh, it's a robotics facility opening? Oh, trap. You know your way to my heart, man, and that's opening non-standard in a PVZ. That's excellent. Oh, that's so good. And there you go, there's that expansion low ground. At about 245, getting the start there. Oh my gosh, this is... This could be adept shenanigans. If we see additional adepts, or adepts, if we see additional gateways starting up here, maybe like a twilight as well, but he's not. What is this? This is almost like, it's a warp prism and it's a stalker and it's another gateway, sure, but this almost feels like an opening you do in PVT. Where you go for, like, Blink Slocker shenanigans before you have Blink, you just use a Warp Prism for it. But I don't, I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen this tried before against a Zerg player, let alone Rogue. What is going on here from Trap? You know, I said, how are you going to throw Rogue off his game? And, I mean, if that's by doing something insane and very weird, then all right, that works for me. So, yeah, here's the Warp Prism. Oh, and then he's going to follow up with Double Stargate. Okay, so we're not leaving the Stargate tech behind. It's just later than it usually is. But yeah, I mean, basically, time to throw up some spores here for Rogue. He's actually not doing that at all. Did he sniff this out? I don't think he did, unless he recognized the second gate at the front and said, okay, you don't have a Stargate. So who needs spores, I guess? So there's Adepts. Sh sure, but they're not resident Glaive Adepts. <laughs> I don't know, man. That Zergling sees the Adepts moved out across the map, so there's a Rotorn coming in, but 12 Lings need to be made now, as the Rotorn will not be ready to go by the time this attack shows up. So, what? okay, so I mean, this is just going to be a warp in a bunch of Adepts or Stalkers, depending on what you need, but Zerglings are kind of the answer to all of this, and there's 20 of them on the way. These are not resonating Glaive Adepts, so they're not putting a ton of fear into the heart of Zerglings without, I mean, not even close, right? Yeah, so the queens are yep, hitting that war prism, and the adepts have to get out of there, and the Roachworn finishes, and 
Now you can fire up a couple of roaches if you need to, or just feel like we handled that pretty well, thanks. Overlord scouts in. Oh, he sees the double phoenix coming out of the double stargate and says, all right, so it's going to be some phoenix play here. Some pretty heavy phoenix play, actually. Honestly, a spore crawler at each of your bases would not go uh, amiss here, Rogue. I'd really recommend it, actually. So hunting for overlords first of all, though. And by hunting, I mean holding perfectly still in the middle of the map. Ling's trying to see where on earth those phoenix are, and they find them. But you're not going to lift and kill Zerglings with Phoenix, but you know what that means is the ground army is not big. What that means is an attack on the third base might be fairly successful, but there are three Adepts. Oh, two Adepts and a Zealot. I apologize, Mr. Zealot. And they're going to protect the third base quite effectively. But yeah, Overlord going to get sniped here. Going to pop like a blood balloon, as they always do. It's just a little bit gross, but you know, Zerg's a little bit gross. Anyway, and this is a T for Teen game anyway. <laughs> Zerglings... Uh, all right, Rogue says, do you, you have enough? And actually, yes. Yes, Trap does have enough. Thank you for asking, though. And this is where... Oh, we do have spores up. How nice. Come on, the Queen's able to hang on there, transfusing each other in the sky. Adepts up, trying to harass a few of these pro... The, the drones, rather. The drones have to fight for their own lives, which is really bad. But, I mean, okay, seven drones down, two Adepts killed. Good trade for the Adepts, I would say. Look at him looping... The wounded Phoenix to the back of the pack there. Great micro on display here from Trap. This is high level StarCraft, obviously. You know that. You clicked on this with that understanding. Queen count is kind of nuts, though. There's 10 of them out there. Going to replace the drones pretty right quick. A fourth base from Rogue would not be too bad around now. Six and a half minutes. Yeah, if you're getting into seven minute territory for your fourth, it's probably a little bit late against a Protoss who's macroing like this. If they're doing two base, then by all means, don't go for that fourth base. But this is a three basing trap versus, there you go, a three basing rogue, and that fourth base is coming in pre the seven minute mark. Plus one attack coming in from rogue, we've got a baneling nest on the way, we've got ourselves range upgrades for hydralisks. Creep spread pushing, lings running around at the speed of sound. There's only, I mean, okay, there's queens here now. So traditionally, us spore is not gonna do much to deter this many phoenix from doing stuff to your drones. But, okay, lings rolling into the third base, but if you have some queens there to support, it's gonna go a lot better for you. Shield battery helping immensely. Speaking of assisting buildings, yeah, that was a lift and drop instantly, recognizing how many queens were here to defend their friend. Queens are good at that. They're good at defending their friends. So Ling's running around trying to find stuff to do. They're just not finding anything. One probe has died. Sure. That's it. Are we killing more? Ah. Uh. Wait, what? What was in that war prism? Hmm. Guess there may be some adepts attacking and then they die. Yeah, two ad additional adepts got killed. After getting four drone kills there at the natural base, so much more quickly. Ling's trying to see if maybe you're going to warp an additional stuff here at the fourth base. Just defending that just to make sure there's hydras out now. But Storm is on the way and charge coming in too. So uh, hydras are not going to be the answer today. It's probably going to be lurkers though, which is, we, you know, we see a ton of that these days with the ZVP. Is lurkers and stuff. Lurkers just in general, no matter what the Protoss is doing. Lurkers are going to be pretty, pretty good. So Ling's coming from both sides, going for a bit of a pincer attack here, but get scouted by the warp prism, and Ling's are like, can we, can we get in? Can we get in? No, the army's... Oh, man. Force field catches a couple Ling's there, but not a lot. And these Phoenix are just annoying. And they're a little bit trapped, too. They might actually need to recall out. Trap might need to get them out of this trap. Are you going to move in? Nah, I think this is a stack-up recall, or maybe to hug the right side, take some spore hits, but otherwise... Yeah, you're good. You're good. Manages to escape there. Lings tried to get something. Oh, they tried to get the probe going for the fourth base, but couldn't do it. The army was there to support, which is excellent. Hyder's getting some beautiful shots off there. Fifth base from Ro coming in at the three o'clock position. 24 Lings, 17 Banelings on the way now, which is a heck of a lot of Banelings. So yeah, Hydra Ling Bane for now. Banelings do crash into the third base, kill a couple cannons. That's about it. Probe count still real healthy. Only one probe is tied today. 12 drones have gone down. Not enough. To really slow Rogue down to the point that you want to. But, I mean, 12 drones is better than nothing. If you get zero drone kills against Rogue in the first nine minutes of your game, you're probably going to die. I mean, it increases your chance of dying by about 40%, I would say. So Trap doing a good job on that one. Nice storm on the Banelings. Trying to split them up. Really trying to connect. Nah, the force fields say, you leave our High Templar alone. Alone. 
Creep spread looking good. I think that's a sniped observer right there. That's a nice pickup by Rogue for sure. Hate losing your observers as Protoss. I mean, they're a little gas heavy to build and they're really useful and building a new one sucks. What the heck did that Bailing? What are those Bailings crash on? Archons will absorb your Bailing shots for days. Oh, they almost took down the shield battery, but no. Dude, Rogue is going from a, for some attacks here and is really not succeeding at all. He's failing miserably. I'm trying to get really much of anything done here whatsoever. Army value is 90, 90, 93 in favor of Rogue, sure, but the fact that Trap is that close is a problem. Trap also has ye old charge lots up at the top left, ready to move into that 12 o'clock fourth base of Rogues, and here they come. There is a spine and a queen here. Beautiful storm! Oh, man. What a scene here! And Trap's actually retreating from that position. The Zealots are doing great, though. Spinecrawler dead, Queen dead, Rogue pushing in. Bailings are like, okay, shield battery dead, cannon dead. Let's get in that mineral line, too. The probes are not running, but they're already kind of pre split, I guess. 16 down. No, 16 drones down up here. The Queens and Lings finally chase away, but 16 drones died at that fourth base. 12 drones died at Trap's fourth at the six o'clock. So fourth bases are not where you want to be right now. Also, the counterattack from Trap is pretty insane. Coming up to Rogue's fifth base, he's just got Zealots and Archons hammering at this thing and really should be able to take it down. Uh, Immortals are going to add their firepower too, and that hatch is toast. Another round of Zealots coming in to try to just go after Queens here, but a little bit of Hydra support, a little bit of Ling support, a little bit of Transfuse there means that's not going to happen. A recall out as he sees some Ling sprinting towards the fourth base, and yep, army there ready to rebuff it. Dude, Trap is looking... Good. He is looking excellent right now. I mean, probably the best Protoss on Earth. It's really too bad he's not going to be playing in Katowice, or not current, didn't play in Katowice. This is actually coming up after Katowice finishes, but I'm casting it before. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. You can tell me who won Katowice. I'm really interested to see who, honestly. I think it's an incredible tournament. It's the de facto world championship. It's got all the best players in the world, except for Trap again, who's going to military, I think, before Katowice happens. At least that's what I remember happening. But Rogue getting a fifth base after losing his fifth at the 3 o'clock position, closer to the 11 o'clock now to make that thing happen. But man, I mean, Trap, sure, he lost some probes, but he didn't lose any Nexuses yet. And that's an issue. Is Rogue going for that Lurker? Yeah, he just started Lurker then. Here in about 12 minutes, which is fine. He's at 150 to 150 supply. Both players pretty even there. We're sky tossing it now, though. The Golden Armada on the way. We've got a mothership cooking. We got carriers cooking here, too. And this is going extremely well for Trap. I'd have to say he's probably favored here. Moderately favored here. But again, great match. At this stage of the game, I don't know that I would put any official money on either player. But if you had to choose... I would recommend Trap. He's looking great. He's got plus one flyer attack coming in. He's on the four bases before he transitions into the Sky Toss, so he's very safe that way. Rogue has no chance but just to meet the Sky Toss at its head here, and the Hydras are going to lose their effectiveness the longer this game goes on. Because if there's, you know, two to four to six carriers, these Hydras can eat them. But once you start getting up to eight to ten to twelve carriers, that's when the Hydras just melt. And they absolutely will die. So here comes a nice little wing attack, kind of hiding off in the corner here. Moving up. Are they going to go in? Nope. They don't like what they see. Oh, they're going to send a scouting wing in first. And see, there's not much here to worry about. Everybody stare at this one Zergling. He's going to give us the play. Go! Go, Baitlings! Oh, the armies are here now, though. Yeah, that's a back out situation for sure. Traps doing a very good job sniffing these attacks out and kind of heading them off before they do much of anything. This, is, this might be Trap being like, okay, I need some ground army here, but let's push in, free up some supply that I can use for carriers later. Maybe some void rays too, but nah, he's pulling back. He's not just going to sacrifice units like that. Wow, it's a lot of lurkers. What just popped? 16 lurkers on the field right now. Also, a spire coming in, adaptive talons being researched. Working on plus three ground weapons. Trap here at 14 minutes. Top left, sixth base for Rogue is under construction as well, or under morph construction. If that's what you're into. Trap tries to expand in the worst possible location known to 
Protoss kind there. So that's a situation where a rogue just kind of sniffed out something that was w weak and vulnerable and took care of it. These High Templar getting storms off are crucial to this base defense. Do they do it? The answer is no. They die instantly to Baneling shots. Is that an Artosis pylon? It's a bit of an Artosis pylon. These go oh, get that pylon before the warp in happens. Oh, he allows the warp in to happen there, but an attack up this way. Remember what I said about the hiders being enough anti-air with a handful of carriers? Yeah, it definitely is. Especially with some queen support up there, too. Oh, Ling's taken down the Zealots, warping in to defend the fourth base here of Trap. Does he have the Adrenal Gland upgrade? He does not have it yet, nor is he working on it. We're making more hiders. No, probes are running into an absolute war zone here. Oh, they're trying to buy some time to save the Nexus, but it's a little bit too late for that, friendos. These Ling take down the Nexus. 19 probes die. And suddenly, Rogue is in a fine place. He handles the attack up north. He takes down a major source of income for Trap. And remember when I was like, Trap has the upper hand? That turned out to change very, very quickly. Which, hey, that's always fun, right? We have an Oracle coming in just for Revelation purposes. Maybe for a little Stasis Ward, too. I don't know. But Revelation usually in the late game ZVP scenario. Trap is not even rebuilding this 6 o'clock fourth base. Is it worth it for him? Yeah, there's enough minerals and gas here to make it worth it. But he's just choosing not to. All right. Well, Seismic Spines is getting researched. Plus one flyer attack. I'm not sure if there are any corruptors out yet. There are not. The carrier group is seven, which is right on that edge of where I told you it was scary. Time warp. Thrown down and storming inside the time warp. That's pretty fun stuff. The Hydras are just eating the interceptors right now. Overseer's planting in oversight mode. So you can see what's going on, because otherwise the cloak is a little bit too effective at the situation. The interceptor count is three. And this, see, this is where the Hydras and Queens are just like, yeah, we're just going to eat your interceptors. Once you get up to a couple more carriers, though, that gets a little bit more difficult to do. And that was beautiful. I mean, Rogue is just holding against these attacks like he's an absolute boss. Trap rebuilding at the 9 o'clock position. Instead of replacing his fourth, he's going to get a new fourth. A new home for his new source of income up along this left side of the map. Oh, killed almost all the changelings. Missed one. Did you really miss a changeling down there? Where is he? Oh, he's in there. We can see his little timeout bar. He's holding the Zelnaga watchtower and traps. Oh, there we go. Traps like, that's not suspicious at all. Zealots tried to push. Oh, they did actually force a cancel on Rogue's attempt to re-expand at the 3 o'clock position. So these little side bases, 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock, not going well for either player. But Traps is existing right now, which is nice. Storm getting tossed down. Queens. Hydras. Plus two attack on that missile attack. Trying to deal abducting the mothership, but not really enough anti-air to kill it right now. Gotta say, I mean, Storm's getting tossed down the Hydras. They're not even necessarily dodging out. But Interceptor count down to 20. Not as much as you want here. Time Warp says, don't chase me. Don't chase me, bro. Just kill my Interceptors. Seven Interceptors remaining and once again trap has to back out he recognizes when that interceptor count is low his carrier effectiveness plummets beautiful zealot attack up here to rogues 11 o'clock base but he decides not to go for it as the hydra army is in the general vicinity i mean this is just a retread of what happened on the southern side with the lings where they were going for an attack then the army was there okay we're just sacking the top left because trap is forcing you to he's forcing the army to move up this way to deal with the interceptors there are 35 again don't worry, we can build those real fast. And the 11 o'clock base under assault. Now that the army's more busy, the Zealots with their plus three attack, can they take down the hatch? It looks like they can. And the Hydra is not enough DPS to actually take those guys out. And bam, the hatch is dead. Beautiful stuff. Another hatch going to die as, wow, trap. He's killing bases here, but Rogue's at 176 to 127 supply. The problem is, a lot of that is drones. 62 supply of that is drones. Is he going to recall into the main? Oh, and he recalls into the main. What an absolute boss. Storms the ramp, says, hey, why don't you come up this ramp into your own main base? <laughs> That's how Trap laughs. It's a very evil laugh. It's a very effective laugh, man. And the main base of Rogue is toast. Rogue. Okay, this game's done some flippity flopping. I thought Rogue was up, and then I thought Trap was up, and then I thought Rogue was up, and now I think Trap is up. Rogue's like counterattack. Oh, forced to cancel on the base at the 6 o'clock, the reattempt. 
thereby trapped by the infestation pit, the hive. I mean, the. I mean, maybe you're going to kill the spawning pool eventually with these adepts. Actually, High Templar, even worse. Even worse against buildings. Ooh, do you not detection for these lurkers? That's interesting. But no, nope, nope, nope. This is GG. GG. I know the supply says Rogue is ahead. I understand that. I do. But you can't lose your entire natural and your entire main while the Proto. Okay, while well, the Protoss casually has all of the income in the world and beat them. Okay, they forced a recall out, but Rogue's down to two mining bases kind of right now. He's oversaturated one of them all to heck. 48 workers on that, like, one... Okay, 25 on that one base, which is way too many. And lurkers, okay, making traps not expand down this way. Re-expand is great, but... I don't know. Is trap basically on two bases, too? Look at this. The income tab says we're about even. Okay. Look, trap has this brand new base at the 9 o'clock, which is great. He's also got his third, which is mining out quickly and his natural's done i mean there's a hundred minerals there it doesn't really count for anything this is crazy this match is absolutely insane right now i dare say this may well get an epic tag 186 to 147 supply the corruptor count is nothing and there are seven carriers here but again that's right on the edge of needing corruptors storm getting tossed down hiders are just killing look at the interceptor corpses flying everywhere nine six interceptors remaining this base is gonna die the carriers cannot save it okay the storm maybe can but not the carriers though the storm is doing actually some excellent work but the nexus goes down anyway and what the crap rogue are you gonna lose your main base and your natural base and your top left and your third and your fifth base and win the game i mean probably the supply is making more sense now. No corruptors. See, the other problem for Trap is when you don't have a lot of minerals, which he doesn't, it's harder to replace interceptors. Carriers become dead weight when you have very low mineral stores and income. So is Trap is going to be like base race. Got to base race the Zerg now. Got to kill his buildings before he kills mine. And look at this. Rogue's like, all right, you want it? Fine. I'm going to evacuate all my drones. Take this top left base. This is mined out anyway, friendo. Yeah, so Rogue just like, okay, take it. You take it. Also, these lurkers are not interested in allowing long-distance mining to happen down here either. Although, they kind of suck at hitting moving targets, you'll notice. That's a miss. That's a miss. That's, okay, that's only a hit because they tried to attack that one first. A few disruptors in. Trap is like two disruptor hits away from winning this game. He's got four disruptors. Okay. I mean... I don't think he has to hit four of them, but two big hits would be amazing. Dude, these, these probes are war heroes. They are gathering very important resources in the middle of a war zone. Taking spines to the face, dodging spines other ways, though. Okay, Zealot's here to save them. Engagement over this way, and bam! Trap backs out, taps out. Rogue's your winner. Sorry, I was... Busy watching the lurker shenanigans, obviously, but just some dancing up here. And what? I mean, Trap kind of abruptly backs out here, right? I mean, he sees... Yeah, all right. That's a beautiful concave dodging the disruptor hits. Pretty good splits, but decent hits anyway. The disruptors die, and then Trap GG's out. All right, fine. He's got 27 interceptors remaining. Army supplies 131 to 86. And Rogue wins the match after losing his main, his natural... His third base, his fourth base, his fifth base, and his sixth base today. That's insane. I mean, sure, he made seven bases. <laughs> he had to replace one of them in order to make that work, but dang. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I knew Rogue was in trouble. I don't think I fully realized how much uh, Trap was in trouble until I looked down and was like, oh. Trap's running out of money. He never replaced that fourth base. His attempt to get the 9 o'clock failed a couple times. And then suddenly he was gasping. He was gasping for minerals, and it didn't work out. And yeah, I mean, I will say again, I think seven carriers is about right on the line where you start needing corruptors. Eight, nine, ten, definitely. Seven's like, mm, it's a lot. It's a lot of carriers, but it's not really enough to freak out about. 
yeah, plus three attack and armor for the Hydras and the Roaches and the Ravagers and the Queens. Like, this was a very nice, fully upgraded, this composition, right? Man, I hope I'm not getting sick. I'm feeling a little sniffly all of a sudden. I'll be fine. But yeah, Blurker's doing their work too. Nothing made out of the Spire today at all. Not a single Corruptor, not a single Mutalisk, not anything like that. And end of the day, it really came down to the 18 probes that Trap had. He didn't have an active mining base. He couldn't kill this army. Rogue, not healthy. I mean, Rogue's two bases mining at 23 minutes, but that is way more. That looks incredible when your opponent's bases are this. And a dead base over here that doesn't exist. And you're long distance mining through a lurker field. Like, that's where you just tap out. Good call, Trap. So Rogue gets the win. Nice game. Really nice back and forth. I gotta say. 59 drones died. 62 probes died. Two nexuses. But seven hatcheries and a hive went down today. It also was spawning pool. Hydra Den, Lurker Den, Baneling Nest, Roach War, an Infestation Pit, Spire. Like every tech structure known to Zerg got killed today. I guess we did have some Vipers out too. I didn't. Oh, we abducted. We abducted the Mothership a couple times. That's right. No tech structures died today for Trap. But it was the income. The income that killed him. As it does sometimes. All right. That was great. That was um beautiful. That was a really, really good ZVP. I, hmm, do we epic tag that? Let me know in the comments if this deserves an epic tag. And that's going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.